Hello everyone, my name is Brianna with Frog God Games, and today we are joined by Ken Spencer, author of Hell Comes to Bogtown, the new game that we are releasing shortly. Hi Ken, how you doing? Pretty good, how are you doing? Doing okay! So you are actively at GaryCon right now. I am at GaryCon. I've been all day at the booth and running events and meeting people and selling books to fans and signing books. It's it's the usual GaryCon experience. That's awesome. So today we're going to be talking about um, your new release, Hell Comes to Bogtown, of course. Can you tell us a little bit about that, just the general premise and story of it? Sure. Hell Comes to Bogtown is a adventure for 5e and Swords and Wizardry. It covers uh, tier one or levels one to three play. And the story is Lord Hindel has died and left his estate to a distant relative, his nephew twice removed. And our heroes are hired by the new Lord Hindel to accompany him to claim his uncle's land and estate and to help run it. So you'll be, you know, his retinue, his his bodyguard, his sheriff, his seneschal, his uh, food taster, uh, his advisors, and you go off into the wicked fins to Bogtown and madness ensues. We always love a little madness when it comes to role play games. What was the inspiration for Hell Comes to Bogtown? Well, there's a place not far from where I live called Red Hill State Park. And a friend of mine and I went hiking there one day and it was late fall and there'd been a fair amount of rain. We decided to take a shortcut and bushwhack cross country between two arcs of the trail. And we ended up in a uh, gully that had been recently flooded and it looked dry. We ended up calling it, oh geez, all sorts of things. A lot of things I don't want to have to say on... <laughs> <laughs> on recording called the Valley of Despair. But in short, we got stuck in the mud and it was foul mud. This part of the country has uh, some oil wells that have been decommissioned. So there's a little bit of petroleum leakage down into the valley, kind of mud where you start thinking, do I really need to leave these boots here and just kind of crawl across as I can? And we got stuck there for a good hour and a half to go a mile. And it was started to rain while we were there. And then when I got back, I went, you know what? This needs to be a place. Mm -hmm. And that created the Wicked Fens. And then Hell Comes to Bogtown is the, how do we get people to the Wicked Fens? And how do we work the Wicked Fens into a plot that's evocative and exciting and mysterious and a little bit of horror? There's a little bit of horror in there. And the Whiskey Zombies. What sort of person would this game be best suited for? Who do you think is going to enjoy this the most? Uh, I think this would be good for groups that are strong on role playing and that want to both solve mysteries and handle a complex political web. So Hell Comes to Bogtown has this absolutely incredible evocative art, and you don't really see that just in every RPG adventure, in my personal opinion. As the project director, how do you and the artists collaborate to make such tonally consistent pieces um, that fit the adventures theme just so well? Well, it starts with our art director, Casey Christofferson, who contacts his set of artists, arranges their free availability for us. Once that's set, uh, I, as the project director, talked with the author. And in this case, since I'm also the author, I created a art order where I go through and go, okay, not just what is the most plot important elements that need to be illustrated, but what are the elements that are going to inspire our artists to create the best artwork that this book can have. Casey and I worked with the artist to create an atmospheric art style throughout the book that is aimed towards not just illustrating this is what this looks like, but we want to get what it feels like. What does it feel like to stand in front of Hindel Manor and the Wicked Fens with the storm overhead brewing and to see the crumbling stone tower and the faded woodwork? What does that feel like is more important than what it looks like. And that creates the image in the end. What is the best way for people to support this product's release? Well, the best way is to go to Indiegogo right now and to back it. We have a variety of tiers ranging from PDF only, uh, PDF plus soft cover, and for our international backers, a PDF plus POD, which helps us cut down on some of the shipping and production costs with sending books around the world. What can people do that would help you in creating games or to support the games that they love for free? We know that the current state of the world has kind of hit everyone pretty hard over the past few years, and some of our viewers may not be able to support raw god creators like yourself financially. Whether it's on the internet or in person, word of mouth is the best way to spread the word about 
uh, projects that you want to support. Uh, if, as you said, if you can't support financially, uh, the old like and share is there for a reason. The more people who are sharing it with their friends and saying, hey, this is something you might also enjoy, the more people hitting the like button, the more our message gets out to the world in whole. So without giving too much away, what is your personal favorite aspect of the story? And do you have a favorite NPC or artifact or place? And I guess this, this next question kind of goes along with it. Is there anything besides that the things you've listed that you are, I guess, the most proud of when it comes to this story? Well, the new Lord Hendel is, is the central NPC, and he's by far my favorite because he starts off as a naive, almost ignorant person and throughout his personality changes and he becomes a embodiment of the old Lord Hendel. He starts to take on his uncle's interests and his uncle's arcane research and his uncle's madness as the story progresses. But my favorite part of it is that it's an adventure where things are going on in the background and the players have to be both proactive and reactive to enjoy the plot. It's not the sort of adventure where you can go, well, I'm going to procedurally go through this dungeon and I'm going to tap ahead of me 10 feet and I'm here the mapper and then send the thief out ahead. It's an adventure where the players need to be constantly planning and plotting and working to solve the mystery, choosing which factions within the Wicked Fens they want to be involved with. Are they going to be involved with the smugglers? Are they going to be involved with the swamp goblins? Are they going to be involved with the gator hunters? So in this small adventure, there's a lot of play packed and a lot of intricate decision-making process. I did a lot of research on swamps and wetlands. <laughs> And the adventure makes a clear distinction, both narratively and mechanically, between marshes and fens, bogs, bayous, <laughs> every type of wetland you can imagine, I found a way to pack it into the, into the Wicked Fen. In fact, driving back to the hotel from the convention center through wilderness, I guess, of Wisconsin, I'm going through and off to the left and right there, I'm like, oh, that's a fen. <laughs> Oh, look, there's a marsh over there. I guess you could say it's an educational sort of game as well. Exactly. What are some of the challenges that you faced when creating an adventure like this? The biggest challenge quite often with the writing is the size that we're looking for. I'm one of those writers who wants to put as much as possible into an adventure, but there's a limit to the book. There's financial concerns. There's time management concerns. You have to go, okay, this is nice, but it's not needed. And in the end, you create a much stronger adventure, a much more concise adventure, but there's always a few things left on the cutting room floor where you want to go, wow, wouldn't it be nice if we can go back and add this to it? As a project manager, uh, the hard part is coordinating all of the wonderful creative minds that we have working on this. The artists, the layout people, Casey and I working together to put together how we're going to present it, how we're going to illustrate it, as well as working with, uh, for example, Jeff Harkness, who's our editor. I write generally in 5e. How do you convert from 5e to swords and wizardry without losing the flavor that's in one system? and making sure that flavor appears in the other system in a way that's consistent with the system it's being adapted into. Thank you so much, Ken, for taking some time out of the con to come talk to us about your new game. Thank you for having me. And uh, the link to Hell Comes the Bogtown, the Indiegogo, will be in the description for anyone who would like to check it out.